And welcome also from my side to this webinar on the continuous purification for peptides and oligotherapeutics and about removing critical barriers in manufacturing. So I'd like to start with, with an overview of today's presentation. So I'll give you a summary of what MCSGP, that is the continuous process we will talk about today, is. Then I will explain to you how the technology works. And then we move to a DNA case study of MCSGP purification, and then to an RNA case study uh, that highlights the scale up of MCSGP. And then um, we show how MCSGP can increase speed and economics of manufacturing. Finally, there's some time for a summary and questions. So in a few words, what does MCSGP stand for and how does it work? So MCSGP stands for multi-column countercurrent solvent gradient purification. Uh, as the name says, it's a multi-column process. And over the years of uh, developing MCSGP, we've actually uh, boiled it down to two columns. So MCSGP is a twin column continuous chromatography technology. It uses two columns of the same type. That's why we call it twin column uh, chromatography. Uh, it uses automatic recycling of impure side fractions from one column to the other, and thereby it increases product yield. And a typical example of what we can achieve is uh, like a yield increase from 60 to 90%, for example, or from 80 to 95%. MCSGP is applicable for a wide range of products, and that includes oligonucleotides, peptides, recombinant proteins, and protein conjugates. MCSGP is particularly useful when uh, purifying product from uh, product-related impurities. And so that's why it's especially effective when it is used together with uh, products that have been used, produced by chemical synthesis. And then uh, we have also uh, UV-based dynamic process control that is available for robust operation of, of MCSGP. And also MCSGP uh, has been scaled up from lab to GMP production scale. On the right-hand side, you see equipment of these two sizes, lab scale and uh, production scale. So MCSGP addresses uh, the challenge that's shown here on, on these two chromatograms below. So uh, if we want to get a product that is uh, flanked by impurities in the front and in the back, and these impurities are overlapping, we have to uh, take a very narrow cut of the product, the center cut, uh, to um, fulfill the purity specifications. Uh, if we take a larger cut, we see that we can we, that we are actually including impurities in, in the front and in the back of this product peak. So we either have a choice between um, getting purity with uh, sorry product with high purity and low yield, because here we are actually excluding a large portion of the product from the product pool, or we ha uh, have on the other hand um, a high yield but a low purity. Right, so this is the typical yield purity trade-off that we have in single column batch chromatography when we operate under reasonable loads and when we have uh, product related impurities present. So how can we solve this challenge? And this is what MCSGP is actually addressing. So MCSGP uh, keeps the high purity but increases the yield. So it stays above the purity specification and uh, just increases uh, the yield. And um, it does so by uh, using internal uh, recycling of uh, the impure side fractions. So uh, this trade-off of overlapping impurities, um, that yield purity trade-off is canceled by MCSGP and MCSGP can obtain high purity and high yield simultaneously. And this leads to many advantages that I will show you in this presentation. So as mentioned, um, in single column batch chromatography, uh, we have a, a low yield because we have to uh, discard the side fractions uh, because they're not in, in uh, specification. Now uh, in MCSGP, what we do is we automatically internally recycle these side fractions and recover the product that is contained therein. So like this, we can get more and purer product. In batch chromatography, to get the product in these side fractions, 
if we don't want to discard the side fractions, we have to do re-chromatography, which means we have to run chromatography uh, under similar conditions uh, with the uh, side fractions loaded onto the column. So, um, and this comes with disadvantages. It increases the yield, but on the other hand, it has some disadvantages. Now with MCSGP, through the automatic internal recycling of the side fractions, uh, we can um, get the product therein, we can get the high yield. We can do center cut purifications with MCSGP. We can run linear gradients. It's a kind of current process. And um, this, this recycling of the side fractions is automatic and uh, this has uh, a lot of advantages too. Okay, let's have a look at how the process works in, in detail. And I go over this uh, quickly. Uh, if you want to learn more about this or study the process in more in detail, uh, it's available on YouTube as a video or on our website as an animation. So very briefly, um, the process is addressing a purification challenge where we want to separate a product from impurities in the front and in the back. This is a schematic chromatogram and it shows you that this a chromatogram can be divided in sections. So we have impurities in the front, we have overlapping portion of product and impurities thereafter. We have a pure product fraction looting next. We have an overlapping portion of the product and the strongly absorbing impurities coming off the column next. And then we have the strongly absorbing impurities eluting last. So this is now a mixture of product and impurities. It's loaded onto the first column here. And we start a gradient on the first column a linear gradient to elute the weakly absorbing impurities that come off first now. So this is like in single column chromatography. And now comes the difference. The next portion that's eluding from this uh, column here on the left isn't the overlapping part between pro of product and impurities. We want to keep that in the process. And therefore we interconnect the two columns here and we internally recycle that overlapping portion from the first column into the second column. We inline dilute it on its way to the second column so that it reabsorbs at the entrance of the second column. Without the inline dilution, this fraction would just pass through the second column and would be lost. So that's why inline dilution is important here. Then looking at the first column again, uh, the next portion that's coming off the column is the product. We want to keep that. So we continue the gradient and we collect the product. At the same time <clears throat> on the second column, we load new starting material. We load new feed material and that's going on in parallel here. And that's mixing with the overlapping portion. It's shown here as if the feed is progressing along the column. In reality, it stays at the and at the very entrance of the column together with the recycled portion here that has previously entered that column. Okay, looking back at the first column again, we have now the overlapping portion of the product and the strong absorbing impurities that we want to keep inside the process. So we transfer that from the first column into the second column and we inline dilute it on its way there. So it stays at the entrance of the second column. Now, um, looking again at the first column, you see that we only have strongly absorbing impurities left on the first column. We're, uh, we don't want to use those, so we're not interested in them. We clean the first column. And uh, at the same time, we actually run, we start the gradient to absorb the weakly absorbing impurities from the, the second, uh, so to wash out the weakly absorbing impurities from the second uh, column. Okay, so first column is re-equilibrated now. And um, you see that we're now basically at the beginning of the this cycle that I showed you, just with the columns in the opposite order. So now again, we want to keep the uh, overlapping portion of the product and impurities in the process. We internally recycle it now from the second to the first column. We do inline dilution. We elute the product from the second column. At the same time, feed the first column. Again, do internal recycling of the overlapping portion from the second to the first column. And then we clean this uh, second column and we start the gradient on the first column 
And now you see we're, we're really at the beginning. We've completed one cycle and this process can go on uh, until all the starting material is uh, consumed. And so you see every cycle, we have product, uh, two product dilutions and we have two feed injections and everything is run uh, fully automated. Okay, so if you look at um, the product concentrations and, and perf uh, performance parameters of, of this run, uh, then you can see that initially we have um, a startup cycle where the yield is, is like in single column chromatography, but then we move on, we move over to a, a stationary, uh, sorry, a cyclic steady state where we get a high yield and uh, constant uh, product uh, concentration from cycle to cycle. <clears throat> so this shows you um, that after the startup period, the process reaches a steady state and then it can assume the steady state um, as long as feed material is, is available. Now the product that <clears throat> is um, missing here basically to make up um, or that's missing here to 100% uh, to yield can be recovered um, to a great extent during the shutdown of the process that is not shown here. And during the shutdown of the process, we run one extra cycle without new feed injection, but we do take out product here. So we can recover some of that product uh, in, the, in the final uh, illusion, in the, in the final shutdown. Okay, we also have a UV-based feedback. Um, control, it's called Autopeak. It's also uh, known under the name of M-Control and that supports a robust operation. It's based on measuring or, and, and watching the UV signals. So as the, the peak is coming out, similar like in batch chromatography, we can uh, start to collect the peak once we have reached a certain UV threshold. And that can be applied also to the stopping um, of the collection. Usually the collection is by fixed time and that is sufficient, but there are other options also. So, and with this M control, we can account for changes in, in temperature, uh, solvent quality, conductivity, pH, and to some extent also column uh, variability. So in, in all of these changes, we, we usually assume that the peak is only shifting by a very small uh, let's say amount, but if, um, let's say a short period of time, one or two minutes to the front or to the back, and that the resolution is not significantly uh, changed by changes of these, for example, temperature or solvent quality. So um, with this, we can then um, coll always collect the same uh, product fraction, even if the peak is, is moving slightly to the front or to the back, and this increases the process robustness a lot. Okay, let's move to um, the purification of oligonucleotides to a first case study. And in this case study, I would like to show you how the MCSGP process is actually designed. So um, we first start the design from a single column uh, run. So we uh, run a batch chromatography operation on the lab scale system. We do a fraction analysis and then we uh, analyze the purity profile. And once we have this information, uh, we can enter it into the, the wizard, as we call it. The wizard is um, a, a tool, a software tool that comes with the operating software of the small scale system. And it helps you design the MCSGP process in a few steps. And it usually takes no longer than, than half an hour or if you're if you have uh, some practice, it's even shorter in 15 minutes or so. Okay, so um, after having loaded the batch chromatogram, we select the product range that we want to collect um, by drag and drop. And we set um, the uh, regions for internal recycling also by drag and drop. So in this chromatogram on the upper right here, you can see that a large region on the back has been chosen for collection and a large re region in the front for internal recycling. It's colored here in blue. And there's a small region for recycling in the back colored in green. Um, then um, afterwards, we set the desired washing and cleaning protocol so we can steps here from uh, the batch protocol 
that shows us how many cycles, uh, sorry, sorry, how many column volumes we have to use for equilibration, what flow rate do we run it, which buffer do we use? So we can just take the, adapt the protocol from batch chromatography here. Then we enable the UV-based dynamic process control, and then we finalize the method uh, by setting the number of cycles and the type of uh, fractionation. And that gives us and leads us from a batch chromatogram to an MCSGP method through a guided procedure in a few steps. So um, let's have a look at these uh, steps in, in greater detail. This is the first um, batch chromatogram that, that we have run. So in this case, an, an exchange uh, step so we used the salt gradient and it was a double-stranded DNA oligo that was that was purified here. The fraction analysis revealed that most the fractions on the back portion in the back side of the peak were in specification near 90% product purity in this case was the the, the specification and uh, the blue uh, the crosses here show you the purity so you can see that it it rises slowly, but that there's a large portion of product that is actually not uh, pure enough, that is not in specification. And this is due to weakly absorbing impurities, which are represented here by uh, light blue crosses. Okay, so using MCSGP wizard now by drag and drop, we select regions for internal recycling, product collection and internal recycling on the backside of the peak. And uh, the wizard then will calculate the gradient segments in the different stages of the process for the interconnected state and the patch state where we take out the product. The rest of the chromatogram goes to waste. And then, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we enter the recovery and regeneration protocol. I will not go into that further because it's very standard. Again, we can take the same steps as in batch chromatography and you just need to adjust the column volumes and uh, uh, the um, loading flow rate. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see the final um, picture of the wizard. Uh, where we get an overview of the different flow rates that are used in the process. Uh, and we get also a product, uh, sorry, a process performance uh, prediction. So we get a prediction of uh, productivity, solvent requirement, and uh, load switch time, cycle time, runtime. So which can help us in doing facility fit calculations uh, later on. We can also, we also have to do some final settings here in the wizard, uh, like for example, how many cycles, number of cycles to run and uh, the maximum pressure that we want to use in this process. Also the fractionation method is set here. Okay, so once we have completed and, and uh, the, the wizard, it has created a method or it will create a method for us that we then can execute on the Contichrome system. And here you see now the result of this um, uh, this MCSGP process design. We have a subsequent um, now signal here with uh, of, of UV and, and conductivity. So you see different colors for the different uh, columns. And what is typical for MCSGP is the repetitive pattern of product illusions from the two columns. So in blue, you have column two and red, you have column one and they, they alternate and you have these, these um, se uh, sequential illusions. Now, um, in order to determine if the process has reached the cyclic steady state, we can overlay the chromatograms. And we see now here that uh, actually in the region of product, the first cycle is a little bit different, but then we get um, afterwards uh, a consistent overlapping of the product curves or the, the, the UV signal in the product dilution regions. So this means that we expect um, a very similar product concentration and also a similar purity. Of course, we have to confirm this by offline analysis. This is shown here. The results of offline analysis are shown here on the right-hand side. So here we see for the different cycles, product concentration, very similar purity, very similar yield, also around the 90s and then product corresponding productivity and buffer consumption. Also what's shown here below is the prediction by the wizard 
and uh, you can see that the numbers do differ a bit. And uh, this is because the wizard expects that we get a yield of 100%, which in reality we have not achieved. So the numbers here of product and uh, productivity are 10% uh, off, but uh, that is that is uh, expected again because uh, the yield, the wizard doesn't know that we will uh, actually get a slightly lower yield than expected. But uh, apart from that, the wizard prediction is is, is very good, and uh, so this confirms the that it's useful for facility fit calculations uh, regarding scale up of MCSGP. Now we're looking at the Pareto curve um, means the curve that represents batch chromatography, different pools of batch chromatography, right? By, that we achieve by widening the product fraction from a very narrow fraction to a very large fraction. Comparing this um, Pareto curve now with the operating results from MCSGP, we can see that um, we have achieved um, at, this, at, at a high purity, a significant improvement in yield. So we go from around 60 to 90% yield using MCSGP for that purity here of 92% when we compare here with, with 92%. Okay, so you see we have some safety margin to the 90% purity that we wanted to get. And yeah, for 92, it's really plus 30% yield. And these are two different operating um, conditions here for batch uh, chromatography and to represent different uh, attempts of optimization of the batch chromatography run uh, and with regard to pure productivity. Here you can also see uh, this group of batch runs here with optimized productivity by increasing flow rates. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, some optimization by MCHGP. So well, you can see while the productivity has, is, is, is in a similar range, uh, the yield was uh, always like 50% more, means if we go from 60 to 90 is 30% more yield, that represents a 50% increase in yield. Okay, so um, yeah, um, it's very clear that we have different groups here of uh, or different ranges of, of yield here that can be obtained by batch and MCSGP, even if we do some optimization in one or the other direction. Okay, so as a conclusion, uh, we can say that MCSGP achieves a high yield and high purity in these center cut purifications, and that the uh, increased yield of MCSGP allows downscaling of upstream chemical synthesis. And I'll elaborate on these points here on the next uh, following slides. It improves productivity, reduces solvent and buffer consumption, eliminates the need for rechromatography, and it avoids generation of side fractions. It's applicable for a wide range of products, and that includes oligonucleotides, peptides, and proteins. Um, now, uh, I'd like to move to second um, scale up, uh, sorry, to a second case study, and that is a scale up scenario for RNA purification. So here in this case um, for RNA purification, we have um, achieved, uh, we have had a look at MCSGP for two different uh, purity thresholds. So the first one was 94.5%. Uh, and here you can see we got an increase of 12% of yield. So we went from, from 88 to around 100%. And here we have uh, for the higher purity constraint, we have an increase of around 16.5% yield from uh, 71, 72 to 88%. So you can see as the, I mean, the Pareto curve that represents batch chromatography gets shallower or yeah, let's say uh, gets, it gets more, it gets more difficult to achieve uh, higher purities here. And the gap to MCSGP widens as we move up this curve. So the higher, purity we want to get, the larger purity we want to get, the larger the advantage of, of MCSGP is. So that's, we can clearly extract that from this uh, case study that we have done here. Now uh, we wanted to use um, these, um, the data that we got from the study to um, do some scale up. 
scenarios. So I'm leaving out here now the part of MCSGP process design and operation, and I'm jumping straight into uh, scale of predictions because that was not covered in the previous case study. So there's some assumptions here about um, the MCSGP um, uh, process. So um, yeah, bed height, purity, productivity, cycle time as mentioned here. And um, with this, we um, ex we had a look at uh, possible uh, scale-up scenarios. So um, we wanted to produce 1,500 grams a day at this product purity here. And um, yeah, so we came up with a column in a diameter of 20 centimeter, a bed height of 10 centimeter, and 180 liters power pump flow rate. And this corresponds to a skid size that's shown here on the right hand side. It's a Conjichrome twin MCSGP 300. And um, yeah, we can calculate other scenarios, but I want to highlight two of them here. So um, in the first scenario, um, where we improve the yield from 80 to 95% at a similar purity, we can exploit this yield improvement <clears throat> by by three options. So the first option is we have a, a larger product output for the same feed input. Second option is we can save time for the same output using the same resin volume. And the third option is we can maintain product output and downstream the upstream synthesis. So um, we have increased the productivity and that gives us uh, these, these options here. Now, in, in this case here, in this case study, we did not optimize um, the solvent consumption. So, um, and, and this comes, uh, this is because we have not optimized the loading. So we will see on the following slides, slightly higher buffer consumption of MCSGP than batch chromatography. This is something that's usually addressed during the further optimization of MCSGP. Okay, so um, options one and two, we have now um, we want to show the time savings and also we want to show the improvement of output. So we, let's assume we have an input of 1,800 grams uh, of product per day, it's shown here. And then with batch chromatography, with this we can produce 1,300 gram per day because of the, the, the yield loss that we have. Now with MCHEP, instead we can produce 1,540 grams per day. So you see the output is improved. Um, this can also lead to time saving. So if we want to up, if we want to produce 300 kilograms with this, these kind of processes here, in batch we would have to operate 231 days and MCHGP we would have to operate uh, around two, well, 195 days. So you can see we get 10 to 20% time savings. Of course, these numbers can change if different column dimensions are, are selected. But here you can see in this case, we use 30 centimeter inner diameter columns in both cases. The columns on the MCHGP were a lot shorter. We have used 10 centimeter bed height. So that's why the resin volume is actually smaller uh, for MCHGP, although we are using the same inner diameter columns. On the lower end here, you can see the recommended skid size and, and column dimensions. Okay, um, then on the next option we wanted to show is same output um, and downsizing of the upstream synthesis. So here we're looking at, we want to get a certain production amount. We want to get out a certain amount of product out of the process. How much material do we have to load? So if we want to get 1,500 grams a day, we have to put in two, uh, 2,075 grams per day of feed material into the process with batch chromatography. With MCSGP, we have to put in a lot less. So um, through the improved yield, we can show here that MCSGP saves, can save 20% of the feed material. And that with this, we can, that means that we can downsize the upstream synthesis. So you see that um, CCGP is giving you a variety of, of options uh, which are related to improvement of, of productivity. 
Now, another improvement of MC or um, improvement that is made possible through MCSGP is um, the operation of 24 seven with uh, fewer staff. And this is because in, in uh, GMP chromatography today in, in, in batch mode, um, well, I'm, I'm just outlining a case here that we know from, from one of the, of the, the users of, of batch and, and MCSGP chromatography. Uh, first employee in batch chromatography does the manual fractionation. Second employee checks, checks if it's done correctly. And the third employee is, is responsible for overall supervision. So for a GMP operation of chromatography, um, you need three full-time uh, FTEs. And depending that depending on the region and company size, this can be it can be too expensive um, to run in three shifts to work also during the night because affording well three employees uh, being active twenty four seven can is is very expensive. Now in MCHGP, you have automatic um, product withdrawal. So uh, there's no manual operation uh, required for the fractionation of the product. And we just have one employee that is uh, required for process monitoring. So with this, um, we can reduce the, the FTE demand from three to one. And uh, it means that we can operate potentially in shift mode and we can operate uh, 24 seven and through this, get a higher manufacturing plant utilization. And due to the higher degree of automation, also, I um, mean, this uh, allows uh, regional manufacturing in US, uh, Europe, or, or Japan, um, because uh, labor is, is, is not so important anymore. Labor costs are not so important anymore through the improvement of MCSGP. Okay, uh, MCSGP also um, has another, a number of other advantages. It eliminates the issues uh, show associated with side fraction, uh, chromatog side fraction generation and batch chromatography. So it eliminates the storage of side fractions, the logistics and uh, the degradation of product in side fractions over time. So the stability, a QC analysis of side fractions, not required anymore because they don't exist. You don't need to think of a pooling strategy for the reprocessing of side fractions. Um, Rechromatography uh, only recovers a small fraction of product because the starting material is dirty. We also have to consider that. So rechromatography is not as successful usually as uh, regular chromatography with regular feed. And it's unproductive because it's not does not process new feed. Again, MCHGP by avoiding side fractions um, eliminates these these issues here, and through this you gain more time for more projects. Okay, at the interfaces to other unit operations, also we do see some advantages. So MCHGP, due to its internal recycling capabilities, uh, it can be run with steeper gradients. And still get high, and still uh, allow for high yields. So with this, uh, we can produce material of larger product concentration, and this leads to smaller elution pools, uh, which which then facilitates further downstream processing steps such as UFDF and freeze drying, that benefits from higher input concentrations. MCSGP can also be efficiently combined with buffer and solvent inline dilution systems. And the cutting and recycling strategy allows for robust operation in case of varying upstream composition. So you can imagine that if we if we choose only a very narrow cut in MCHGP and larger portions for the recycling in the front and in the back, we can afford having uh, feed composition variations because uh, the impurity peaks that are maybe larger or smaller at the front or in the end are still recycled because they're always in the side of the recycling region. So this is also an important point. Okay, on the right-hand side, you can see an, an skid that has been uh, has built, assembled for um, 
twin column chromatography operation with in, inline dilution. So the top part is the chromatography system and the lower part you can see here is the buffer inline dilution part. So these two can be put together in, in, a, uh, in a footprint saving way. Okay. Um, we've also carried out an economic evaluation of MCSGP for peptides. And uh, this is uh, now, it's available as a paper. Actually, it has been published in 2019. And it shows the cost savings of MCSGP. If you, if you look at um, batch chromatography runs, if you compare it with batch chromatography runs with a varying degree of uh, product yield. And you can see that even if uh, to the largest um, yield batch run, the MCSGP through uh, an improvement of yield from 70 to 95 percent still gets uh, leads to an improvement of manufacturing cost of around 600,000 US dollars a year for a production of 10 kilogram peptides. And in this study, you can also see that these the main um, savings are due to the a re uh, reduction in, in synthesis costs here. That those and synthesis costs actually make up for the largest part of the of the manufacturing costs of peptides here. Okay. Also, you can uh, this paper shows that the payback period of MCSGP capital expenditure investment compared to batch chromatography is less uh, than a year. Okay. So this is a chart taken from that paper and shows you that the payback period actually becomes shorter, the lower the batch chromatography yield is because there the benefits of MCSGP are larger. Hey, Roy wants five kg of, um, of the uh, triart. What kind of delivery Sorry. are you talking about? Ken, um, next is um, MCSGP reduces solvent and resin demand. Mm. Uh, if you compare MCHGP to traditional single column batch chromatography, MCHGP reduces solvent and resin demand and thereby reduces yeah. environmental it's impact. Delivery. Um, so in summary, MCHGP is applicable for a wide range of products, as I mentioned, and it increases the speed of manufacturing and QC by eliminating rechromatography. So I really don't want to. It be improves uh, the um, manufacturing it. plant utilization by robust operation 24/7 and requires fewer mm -hmm. resources, uh, human and materials, produces less waste and saves cost. And finally, this allows you to do more projects and lowering to lower manufacturing costs. Okay, um, with this, I think. I'm uh, towards the end of the presentation. And uh, I would like to hand it over to uh, Gerard for a few uh, final words before Q&A. Thank you very much, Thomas. That was, that was an excellent presentation. Okay, I'd like to bring it back to Thomas for the Q&A. And Thomas, uh, let me look through uh, the questions that have been submitted. Uh, can we use commercially available I, uh, AIEX or RP, reverse phase columns, or is there a special uh, specification needed for the Contichrome cube? Um, yeah, so the answer is you can use any uh, resin that you have used in batch chromatography also for MCSGP. So no limitation there. Okay, next question. Do you have any experience on the separation of phosphophoreothiolated oligos? Um, so uh, right now I, I, I cannot comment on that, but uh, I can I can say that uh, MCSGP can be applicable or is applicable to um, any kind of uh, purification challenges where you could also use batch chromatography. So if you're purifying your oligos with single column chromatography and you do see a trade-off between yield and purity because you have this uh, impurities in the front and in the back of the main peak. If you can do that in batch chromatography and you have these issues with the yield, you can also use MCHGP and expect a yield improvement. Thank you. And the next 
person says, I don't have a cube, um, do you provide feasibility studies on, uh, uh, that you can perform on my molecule? What would be the timing, how long, and how much sample would I need to provide? Okay. Yeah, so uh, we do f offer feasibility studies. The, the lead time uh, depends a little bit on the um, how many feasibility studies we have we're currently doing so but it's typically a couple of of weeks that uh, needs also the time is also needed to sort out the material transfer agreement and then um, the feasibility study itself takes uh, around uh, four to six or four to eight weeks let's say and uh, the amount of material that is needed is uh, it depends on the load that you have in single column chromatography but it's anywhere between one and five gram typically. Very good. Uh, sorting through, let's see. Does the UV base control require a special detector? Um, actually, it, uh, UV base control uses the detectors that are in the system already. So it just uses the existing uh, UV detectors. Okay. Um, I'm going to phrase, phrase this one. Um, why is manual rechromatography any less effective? Yeah, I mean, maybe the answer is because it's manual. So um, you need a person to, to do it, right? It's, uh, and, and we see also that you need some person to, to check what the first person is doing there because mistakes can be made. So I would say it's, it's, it's mainly uh, because of that human error. Okay, next um, software related. Is the software in the lab system, which would be the cube, substantially the same as in the large scale production units? Yeah, so um, the, the software is different, but, but when designing the software, we uh, paid attention to have a similar appearance and to, to have, uh, well, similar uh, features uh, in, the, in the cube and in the large scale system so that uh, the transition is, is easy for, for, the, for the user. Uh, just another um, let's see, reminder to the audience, uh, please continue to submit your questions. Um, are there any column size limitations? Is there a small uh, development scale and a large scale instrument? Yeah, so we've seen uh, these two instruments uh, on the on one of the first slides. So the, the, the benchtop system comes in uh, flow rates up to 100 mils per minute. So the first version is 36 mils per minute. The second one is 100 mils per minute. And this can cover, depending on the flow rate columns, up to five centimeter in a diameter. Um, then the larger scale systems, they also exist in, in, in different versions and um, they can be, uh, they can operate with flow rates up to uh, 10 uh, liters a minute and can be also customized to larger flow rates, 20 liters a minute or above. Can this chromatography perform reverse phase methodology? Um, yeah, actually, um, the, the uh, many cases or it actually started with reverse phase chromatography for peptides. Yeah, so definitely um, this, the, the, the small scale, the lab scale system can do both um, ion exchange and reverse phase chromatography. And also the large scale system is available in different versions for aqueous solutions and also for reverse phase, um, fulfilling also the, the, the standards required from safety perspective like ATEX. What is the cycle definition? Um, cycle definition, a cycle is defined as this, basically the sequence of these two um, phases uh, that, that, I've, that I've shown you. So batch chromatography, uh, sorry, batch phase, parallel phase, and interconnected phase. So uh, two of them, first one with the columns in, in, in one order, the second one with the columns in the other order, uh, will form a cycle. Okay, next question. Thank you for the questions. These are, these are very good questions. Um, this has, 
has this been developed with AEX Chrome in mind, other modes? Well, um, as mentioned, it can be run also with reversed phase, uh, and it can also be uh, run uh, with other modes. So uh, hydrophobic interaction we've shown, we've used it with multimodal chromatography. So definitely everything where, where, you th where you're using linear gradients and bind uh, using bind dilute chromatography, you can use also MCHGP. It has also been used with pH gradients and ion exchange chromatography instead of salt gradients. Uh, platform. Next question, is the instrument okay with organics? Um, yeah, so I mean, in reverse phase, we, we do use our organic solvents. So uh, definitely the answer is yes. Uh, another question, is the final sample volume increased versus batch chromatography? Yeah, so um, I, I don't know what exactly is, is, is meant by that, if that is the, 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 the feed that is applied or the, the eluid. So um, in, if we, it depends a little bit on the way we cut. So for the eluid, so the sample volume, if we, if we run it um, at a steeper gradient is definitely decreased versus batch chromatography. And um, yeah, usually um, the sample volume is, is, is about uh, the same, but it depends a little bit on the process design. Very good. And here's a question around the flow rate range on the, what is the flow rate range on the systems? And if you can comment on the cube, I can uh, comment on the, um, the larger scale systems. Yeah, so I think we, we just had answered that question, right? So on the cube, it's up to 100 mils hmm. per minute. And um, yeah, so there are two versions, 36 mils a minute and uh, 100 mils a minute up to. And uh, the lower end, on the lower end, uh, it starts at 0.1 mil per minute for the 36 mil per minute system. And on the larger scale systems, there's standard um, uh, platform. There's three standard systems. I believe the first one's around a liter a minute and then uh, three uh, liters a minute and then about nine liters a minute. And then custom systems uh, beyond those flow rate ranges uh, um, up to, I think we're designing things in the uh, uh, 40 liter a minute uh, range on a custom um, basis. Uh, next question, are there any additional considerations to consider when selecting resins? Hmm. Well, basically you can use the same resins as, as in batch chromatography. So uh, I would say basically not. So maybe this relates to, to the back pressure because we're using two columns, but as you have seen, we, uh, instead of one long column, let's say instead of one, um, column that is 20 centimeter bed height, we use two columns that are 10 centimeter bed height. So we expect the pressure drop the overall over the beds in, 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 in sequence to be the same in both cases. Okay, uh, another very good question here. Does the MCSGP permit to increase the amount of product purified per liter of stationary phased compared to batch? Yeah, so I mean, we've we've seen um, the the productivity increase from uh, in this case of the RNA from ten uh, <clears throat> grams, per, uh, sorry, from six grams per liter per hour to ten grams per liter per hour. This means that um, yeah, we can go f f from six to ten basically. So the answer is yes, per liter of stationary phase, we can we can increase. Okay, we have a handful of other questions. I think we'll be able to get through these in the next couple of minutes. So we'll finish on time. Um, are either the bench top system or the production capacity units capable of being operated in a classified environment? I'm assuming that means a, an explosion proof type of environment. So for the bench top system, um, I would say it's it's a process development system that is I mean it can run with uh, uh, organic solvents. Uh, it's 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 not intended to run in 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 a classified in, environment. So um, basically, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 for R and D environment. And maybe you can comment on the large scale. 
the the larger scale systems, yeah, they they are designed for operation in class one, div two, ATEX, uh, just about any of the the global classifications for uh, uh, a classified environment. They're uh, manufactured standard with with that uh, in mind. Uh, we've already mentioned the one on capacity. Uh, let me rifle through and see. Um, during the MCSGP process, will I be concentrating my contaminants? Um, yeah, so the answer is to, to some degree in the regions of the internal recycling, um, impurities may actually accumulate. Um, but um, in the process design, uh, we make sure that um, a portion of the impurities are also discarded. And uh, as impurities, let's say, accumulate in the recycling region of the process, um, at some point, the same amount of impurities will be eluded from the process and discarded with the waste as we load with a new starting material. So we do reach a steady state. There may be some degree of accumulation of impurities, but eventually we reach a steady state. And in the product elution portions, you don't notice this because uh, it only happens in the recycling portions. So you may be able to see it in the, with the internal UV, but not uh, in the product analysis. Here's a question they're complimenting you on a great presentation. And then uh, the question is around M control. It says, I understand how M control works when the peak timing shifts earlier or later. What happens if my peak widens a bit? Yeah. So um, this is then, it, it means that uh, the, the resolution somehow changes. Um, that is, let's say it's a little bit more tricky to address with, uh, with the M control. So uh, we can still collect at the same UV threshold, but um, uh, actually it means that due to the change of resolution, maybe also the, the impurity peaks have, have actually broadened. So we may need to apply um, different criteria there. So we can change the, the collection criterions for, for the threshold to uh, a higher or lev level or a lower level during the run. But we would really have good knowledge about, pro about the process to, to make sure that, that we still um, are collecting product that is, that is good enough. Yeah, so that's a challenge. Excellent. And uh, I know that we're nearing the end of our time. So one final question. Any questions we don't get to, we will respond to you in writing um, or Thomas will. Uh, let's, uh, if I, if I, what if I only need to separate a side fraction on one side of my product peak, will MCSGP still work? Um, yeah. So you basically can design the process in a way that uh, we only have uh, one side fraction for re internal recycling. In fact, in one of the examples that you've seen, there was a very shallow uh, or narrow uh, recycling fractions on, on the backside of the peak. That was the first example I showed. I can also set that to zero. Excellent. Well, Thomas, again, I'd like to thank you for a, a great presentation. It's been very informative. Uh, I want to thank all the audience for your questions and your participation today. Uh, for those of you who might have an immediate uh, question, you can reach out to uh, Thomas at info at ymcpt.com. That's info at ymcpt.com. In a short while, uh, you'll receive a, a link to the archive version of this presentation and a link associated to uh, reference documents, uh, such as the paper that uh, Thomas, I believe, referenced in, in one of the case studies. Uh, please uh, uh, consider sharing these with your colleagues who couldn't attend today. And a reminder, this is one in a series of webinars, all of which you can find posted on the uh, YMCPT uh, YouTube channel. Uh, look for that or on our website. We will end our session now. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.